classified by authority of the SCP Overseer Council. This document and all associated documents are the property of the SCP Foundation and are subject to the classification requirements and restrictions therein. This document may or may not contain lethal memetic defense measures. Attempting to access or disseminate this document without proper and sufficient authorization is punishable by death. Item number SCP-6483 Security Level 2 Containment Class Keta Secondary Class Integrated Disruption Class Eki Risk Class Notice Assigned Site Sites 120 and 322 Site Directors Director Council P. Law Research Heads J. Rivera A. Kush Assigned Task Force not applicable. Special containing procedures. Per new foundation wide orders in accordance with Directive Alpha 1911 and the integration program. A beta priority foundation project focused on redeeming and rehabilitating anomalies under the influence via direct employment. SCP-6483 is to be employed at Site-322 as maintenance personnel and seasonal entertainment. It is no longer to be referred to by the standard object pronouns. It is. With personnel being advised to instead use his preferred pronouns, he, him. SCP-6483 has a micro-scale scranton reality anchor implanted in his spine. The anchor is to be checked for proper function weekly. Should it fail, allowing the entity to initiate a Nativi Tatis event, Site-322 is to immediately initiate an autokinetic lockdown until the threat is properly dealt with. SCP-6483's weekly therapy sessions are considered a priority. Description SCP-6483 is a 67-year-old class 4 human reality bender, legally named Nicholas Roberts. Measuring 179 centimeters in height and 104 kilograms in weight, SCP-6483 has only ever used his abilities to achieve Christmas-themed reality alterations. Whether this is by choice or due to external factors remains unknown. SCP-6483's past reality warping actions have included altering his immediate surroundings to align with the Western European aesthetic of Christmas, changing his clothing to that of the stereotypical outfit of Santa Claus, manifesting Christmas meals comprised of the cultural holiday food corresponding to nearby individuals, generating small items and gifts desired by individuals around him, how SCP-6483 possesses the knowledge about their wishes remain unknown. Instantly teleporting to the North and South Poles, passively increasing personnel happiness and satisfaction around him. If multiple, the above actions are undertaken simultaneously in one location. The event following is referred to as a Nativitatis event. During such a time, SCP-6483 will engage in a Christmas supper with people in his current location. Note, all personnel that have taken part in a Nativity Tardis event have been verified to be free from medic compulsions. Despite this, all independently expressed positive emotions at having participated and willingness to do so again. Upon the completion of the supper, he will teleport to another location and repeat the event. He will repeat this until he becomes too tired to do so, at which time he will return to his accommodations. Currently, a standard Foundation personnel room at Site-322. Unless underconnectedly suppressed, SCP-6483 will undertake these actions regardless of current surroundings or time of year. It is unknown how SCP-6483 selects locations for my TV Daddy's events. When questioned, he stated that he goes wherever is most in need of the Christmas spirit. 
However, for the duration of his containment, he has only teleported between Foundation sites. Discovery SCP-6483 was discovered on the 28th of October 2019 in Michigan, United States, when the Foundation was alerted to report of reality altering activity. The event retroactively labeled as the first recorded TV Tati's event was not considered a significant fail breach, but the continued freedom of SCP-6483 made future fail breaches inevitable. The Foundation intervened, administering amnestics to witnesses of the event and spreading a misinformation campaign that the event was an early Christmas festival organized by civilians. SCP-6483 was then transported to the nearby Site-322. One of the main propagators and leaders of the integration program, alongside Area 179 and Sites 43, 87, 120, and 666, where the following interview was conducted. Date, 28th of October, 2019. Interview, Nicholas Roberts. Later designated SCP-6483. Interviewer, Dr. Anthony Koch. Begin now. Good evening, Mr. Roberts. My name is Dr. Anthony Koch. I'm here so we can figure a few things out. Roberts attempts to stand up, but Koch dismissively waves for him to stay seated. You're not in trouble. I just have a few questions for you. <laughs> oh, of course, and please... Call me Nick, Sick Nick, Santa, Santa Claus, any of those are fine. Ho, 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 ho. Dr. Koch smiles thinly, raising his eyebrow a little. Of course, uh, Mr. Roberts. Brief pause, during which Koch browses through documents on his tablet. Now you've been told why you're here? Indeed. Ho, ho, ho. That won't be happening again, sir. I didn't realize Christmas joy was now illegal in America. <laughs> oh, it's still legal. I'm talking about your abilities. Immediately, the smile drops from Robert's face. His eyes start back and forth as he approaches Koch, getting close and whispering. How do you know of this? Did the elves tell you? Yes, the elves. Robert looks around himself, standing up. You will not stop me again, you bastard! Robert starts walking around the room, visibly trying to find the exit. I haven't missed a single Christmas delivery since 98 factory fire, and this year will be no different. Ho 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 Koch sighs. He rubs his face with his hands. What do you say your name was again? I am Father Christmas to the Bacons, St. Nicholas to the Christians, Chris Kringle to the Donut Companies, Santa Claus to the Capitalist, and to all the good little boys and girls of the world, simply Santa. Koch rolls his eyes. Ho, 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 my sleigh on weights. Robert heads toward the exit doors. Koch intercepts him. Mr. Roberts, Santa, we're not here to harm you. Then why do you want to stop my deliveries, especially during Christmas? Ho, 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 ho. Koch sighs again, very slowly. Mr. Roberts, you aren't Santa Claus. Impossible. Ho, 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 ho. You are an agent of the Krampus or the Grinch. Ho, 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 ho. You lie. You're what we call a reality vendor, an individual that possesses the ability to... Oh, my dear child, you're not an agent of war on Christmas. You're a victim. Let me bring some Christmas magic back to your heart. Ho, ho, ho. Robert snaps his fingers, and his clothing immediately changes to a red outfit with drooping cap. The interview room changes to contain Christmas lights, tree, and a burning fireplace. In his hands, a Christmas turkey appears, and he proceeds to put it on the table near which he and Dr. Koch sit. Manipulate reality. I do indeed hope that clears things up, my dear child. Ho, ho, ho. Koch sighs, this time in a sad tone. That is... It's something, Nick. But, I mean, it's just a parlor trick. I've seen more impressive. 
Yes. I'm glad that you get to play pretend, but it's not doing you any favors. Drop the act so we can talk about what comes next. Don't be like that, Anthony. I promise you, I'll do everything I can to bring the Christmas spirit back to your heart. That's what the matter of Christmas is all about. Dr. Koch pulls up a file on his tablet. He inhales deeply. Your name is Nicholas Roberts. You were born on December 25th, 1953, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ho, ho, ho! Stop! Ho, 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 ho! The fireplace dims. Graduated with a degree in hospitality in Cornell University, bounced from hotel to hotel, but never quite becoming more than a manager. Stop! <laughs> The Christmas lights start flickering. No kids, but married once. Divorced. Please, stop. The turkey on the table is replaced with a pile of coal. Dr. Koch turns his tablet off. You aren't Santa Claus. Both stay silent for two minutes. Oh, oh. Albert chokes back a sob. Is there anything else I can do for you? Roberts does not respond. End log. Afterward, following the above interview, proper containment has been established, resulting in Nicholas Roberts obtaining the SCP-6483 designation and accommodations at Site-322. Dr. Koch was reprimanded for inducing unnecessary emotional turmoil in an unpredictable humanoid anomaly, risking a containment breach. Addendum 6483-1 Containment Breach Log Starting at 1900 Eastern Standard Time on 24th of December 2019, SCP-6483 overpowered the local reality anchor network, successfully initiating an Atifitatis event within Site-322 and later proceeding to the neighboring Area 179, the O4 Council. Note, a gathering of site directors, department leaders, and important personnel responsible for handling important situations that do not require the attention of Overwatch Command. Delegated a special task force to non-violently recontain SCP-6483. SCP-6483 was successfully recontained without violence. However, months after being returned to his cell, he transformed the walls of his cell to peppermint hard candy and it was immune to damage, save for consumption. Following two hours of consumption from on-site personnel with minimal progress, it was decided an alternate route of entry was necessary. Two hours later, after gaining more intelligence on the situation via attendance at the old four council, Dr. Jesse Rivera of Site 120 note, Site 120 Director Council Member, Human Resources and Personnel Satisfaction Lead, fully realized Level 4 Reality Bender, heavily involved with the Foundation's work on humanoid anomalies, often accompanying the research herself, presently intervened with the containment of SCP-6483, successfully breaching into the sealed room via her ontokinetic abilities, See the below log for more details. Date, 24th of December, 2019. Interviewed, SCP-6483. Interviewer, Dr. Jesse Rivera. Begin log, the previously undecorated containment cell is now decorated with classical Christmas furnishing. There are traditional Christmas dishes atop the table, such as turkey, roast beef, and cranberry sauce. Christmas carols were audible, which accompanied the crackling of a chimney fire near a Christmas tree. In the corner, SCP-6483 is sitting, staring at the floor. Like earlier, he was wearing a traditional Santa Claus outfit. There is a distortion in space as one of the wards the lights open, the red and white stripes of the peppermint candy rippling. Rivera walks through it. She sniffs the air, noting the scent of pine and cinnamon, 
sneezes and slightly smiles, noticing SCP-4483. She sits next to him. Hi. SCP-6483 looks at her. Can I join you? Leave me alone. Please. Just leave me alone. All right. Yvara proceeds to check her phone, but continues to sit near SCP-6483. He stares at her and sighs. Here to remind me that I'm not really Santa. Hmm? That's what the last doctor responsible for me tried to nutcracker into my head. He fell up pauses at the odd word choice, but continues. I know I can help you. <laughs> and how would you do that? Beat the Christmas spirit out of me? Dr. Vifera stands up and extends a hand towards SCP-6483. Let me show you something. He accepts it. Joining her as she closes her eyes and clenches her fist around an amulet hanging on her neck. She offers him her hand. He does so, and two seconds later, both disappear. The two are no longer in the containment cell, but frozen plain in the Antarctic. There is no wildlife visible. Visibility is slow due to a fierce blizzard. Despite this... The two are surrounded by a translucent orange bubble. The air is still within the bubble, and the snowflakes melt into trails of steam as they collide with its walls. The various amulet burns with the same orange light as their protection. She takes a step forward, and the bubble follows her. SCP-6483 joins her. They walk through the plane together. What is this place? Where are we? The fellow sits on the ground behind a snowbank. The orange bubble hugs her legs. Somewhere private, somewhere we can talk safely. She shows SCP-6483 to join her. He raises his eyebrow, but complies. Why? Huh? You have all the power. The power to remake the world at your fingertips. And yet... You use it to play Father Christmas. Don't you ever dream of doing more? Of smashing the world as unreal as it is? You could be a modern king or a god, breaking it in. SCP-6483 stands up, scrambling away from her. Oh God, what do you want with me? Uh, I'm not a murderer. I... Sorry, I needed to make sure. Power changes people, really for the better. With suspicion, SCP-6483 lowers himself to the floor again, but keeps his distance from Dr. Rivera. So why Christmas? Why Santa? Why does anyone dress up like Santa? I wanted to make people happy, and it made me happy. Dr. Rivera does not respond, but she nods. I always have, when I was born. My parents named me Nick, because I was the Christmas miracle, see? <laughs> After that, well, my birthday was always Christmas, so I always dressed up as Santa as a little boy. I suppose the kids at school thought I was a bit of a weirdo, but I always tried to be kind, and I made a lot of friends by giving them presents they didn't even realize they needed. Sounds like they were taking advantage of you. No, no, nothing like that. It was never... If someone's dog had died, I would send them a card. Stuff like that. And that worked? Surprisingly, yes. Later on, I wanted to go to theater school, but my parents didn't like that, said they'd be ashamed of me. So I went to hospitality instead. After graduating, I jumped from hotel to hotel. I always loved doing the Christmas displays for hotels. But, well... I look too young to dress up as Santa most of the time. If ever chuckles, SCP-6483 also chuckles, but it is not ho ho ho. When I realized I could bring Christmas spirit wherever I wanted, it seemed like what I was born to do. Have you ever felt like that? I know a thing or two about destiny. It's a mean bitch. You can't mean that. 
Remind me to introduce you to my friend Daniel. He's had a few run-ins with Destiny himself. SCP-6483 slouches, staring at the snow. I never said I was going to go back with you. I could just stay out here, you know? Me and the reindeer. This is Antarctica. I have a workshop here too. Had, I suppose, when I was in depth of my delusions. I imagine a workshop here as well as up north. Elves and reindeer and all. I suppose they won't be here anymore though. I'm sorry. I know it wasn't helpful for me to say that about destiny. Please continue. Alright, I spent the next 30 years or so bringing Christmas where I could, usually in small places or for people who really needed it. If I saw a family trying to make ends meet, I would pop by their house on Christmas Eve and give them the turkey dinner they needed. I would sneak in through windows or chimneys and leave presents where I could. Small things like that. I was a reverse Scrooge just on Christmas Eve. <laughs> you caught me three months ago. I hardly remember. But when I was three, every day was Christmas Day and every night was Christmas Eve. So if you were doing so much good, making so many people happy, why the change? Why do you do something so dramatic? Why risk getting caught? SCP-6483 looks at Rivera. I wanted to do something bigger, something grander. I was Santa Claus, for God's sake. I should be bringing joy and wonder to the world, teaching all the good little boys and girls that sometimes magic is real. SCP-6483 throws his arms in the air. And yet here we are. You caught me. The first time I try to do something bigger to fulfill my destiny, the men in black take me away. This doesn't have to be the end. I'm like you. You saw what I did to the cell wars. And I'm walking free. You don't have to stay locked up. You could help us, and we could help you. <sighs> it's... It won't be the same. It would feel insincere. A crypto quo. What are you going to do through the motions of celebrating Christmas every day of the year? You did. I celebrated every day. I didn't pretend. We will find a place for you. There are jobs, housing, opportunities we can offer you. We... SCP-6483 looks directly into Rivera's eyes. But will I be allowed to bring Christmas cheer? She avoids eye contact. I... Not as much as you have been. The higher-ups will think of a satisfactory compromise. <laughs> Hell, I am one of the higher-ups. The old four will find the best place for you, especially in these trying times. Can you promise me this? <sighs> I'll do everything in my power, but it's not fully up to me, but I can promise you one thing. The Foundation will take care of you. 322... Hell, even 120, if you want, will be good to you. They're good people. They gave me a good home with a good job, and friends cared about me. You just have to come back with me. Rivera smiles, extending her hand towards SCP-6483. So, you in? Will you join us, so that we can figure something out together? SCP-6483 still looks hesitant. It'll be better than the life you have now. SCP-6483 accepts Rivera's hand, but his sad expression does not change. End log. Afterward, following the above transpiring, SCP-6483 and Dr. Rivera returned to his containment cell. From that point on, SCP-6483 was entirely compliant with Foundation staff, albeit visibly less energetic. SCP-6483 was selected for the integration program and current containment procedures when acted. Addendum 6483-2 SCP-6483 Integration Proposal 
Dr. Jesse Rivera, Site 120, SCP-6483, aliases Nicholas Roberts, Santa Claus, possesses high-level reality warping abilities capable of facilitating Christmas celebration. As part of the integration program, we propose two sets of duties. During the holiday season, running from November 28th to January 1st, SCP-6483 will visit a different foundation site daily. At each site, SCP-6483 will initiate a Nativity's event using his unique abilities. This is protected to improve personnel morale and save a significant amount on annual Christmas finishings. For the rest of the year, SCP-6483 will remain at either Site 120 or Site 322, depending on its choosing. Dr. Jesse Rivera will provide psychological counseling to assist SCP-6843 in transitioning to a significantly diminished level of Christmas celebration. SCP-6483 will be employed as minion staff, as well as a specialized consultant on matters relating to the cultural context of Christmas. Integration History Log 3rd of January, 2020 SCP-6483 Integration Proposal Fully Approved SCP-6483's psychological state improves moderately. 28th of November, 2020 First holiday season for integration of SCP-6483 begins. SCP-6483's depression enters remission. 1st of January, 2021. Holiday season ends. SCP-6483 returns to maintenance and clerical duties. SCP-6483 does not relapse into depression. Holiday season integration measures deemed a full success. 10th of September, the impasse begins. Anomalies start losing their anomalous properties. SCP-6483 loses all anomalous properties. His depression recurs. Addendum 6483-3 SCP-6483 Psychology Note 15th of November, 2021 SCP-6483 is in good shape at all. The integration program was working. Nick had started to accept that he wasn't Santa and was fine with it. Together we had reframed his abilities not as a universe telling him to be Santa, but to bring the character of Santa to life. He spent all of our appointments this year gushing about how happy it made him to see so many different people, grant them a Christmas miracle, and how much he was looking forward to next December. A remarkable change from his struggles with depression over the previous year. We were even discussing the possibility of letting him perform as Santa in public, though of course with extensive cover stories and a high chance of non-approval. Now? The impasse is hitting all of us pretty hard, and striking to see how much is torturing Nick. He has lost everything. He believes he was born to play Santa, but he'll never be able to truly do so again. We know the impasse will kill all magic, but it was also cruel enough to kill his Christmas magic early. It's little we can offer him. We can give him a job to keep him busy, a nice house. A couple of staffers for company, and significant input into Site 120 and Site 322's Christmas furnishings, but our budget is strained, and he's not suited for the mundane life. It's like acclimating a god to be content with playing with dolls. I think it hurts him to have me as a psychologist. I retain some power, though less with every passing day, but he has none. I can see the pain in his eyes when we talk. This is beyond my ability to repair. Maybe Simon Glass could do it, but I doubt it. With sorrow, I say this. I cannot recommend releasing him into the civilian population. He knows too much. He's sufficiently loyal. And frankly, we need all the manpower we can get. I would do my best to keep his head above the water. 
but I can't say how much longer we can sustain to this. Jesse Rivera, SCP-6483 Project Lead. Item number, VMP-6483. Site-120 data release. Assigned site, Site-1483. Site, site Director, Dr. Thomas Bailey. Research Head, Dr. Thomas Bailey. Assigned Task Force, Theta-9. The Polar Express. Specifications, Nicholas Roberts, a 70-year-old human member of Mobile Task Force Theta-9. The Polar Express. Measuring 179 centimeters in height and 104 kilograms in weight. Possesses Class 3 reality bending abilities. Pairs Vanguard employment and housing equipment. He is only allowed to use autokinetic abilities during Theta 9 missions. Refer to Addendum 6483-1 for more details. Disguising visual indicators of Fully realized class 3 or above reality benders, ergo purple eyes. During civilian interactions or emergency circumstances until such a time that autokinesis has been fully integrated into baseline society. Normalization protocols. Robert will provide a benign introduction to the public of the abilities and limitations of reality warpers. A strong self Identification with the persona of Santa Claus will promote widespread acceptance of autokinetic abilities. Furthermore, his role as a cultural liaison will aid in the normalization of VMP-1483. Robert has significant experience playing the character of Santa Claus, a figure strongly associated with non-religious observations of Christmas. He has agreed to feature in Vanguard Christmas video productions, in which he will use his underconnected abilities to perform RT-Fitatis events. His controlled application of reality warping will demonstrate to the public that underconnected individuals can be safe, sane, and natural. The association with Santa Claus will reinforce the image of reality bending as not inherently malevolent. Robert will serve in a public-facing role within MTF Theta-9. He will be tasked with conveying cultural nuances about Christmas to representatives of the Third Antarctic Empire, and will in turn be responsible for participating in Empire holiday celebrations to further develop the cultural exchange. As a cultural liaison, Roberts will be permitted to perform Nartit Vitati's events year-round. Roberts will feature in Vanguard Video Productions as Santa Claus, describing holidays celebrated within the Empire as part of normalization procedures for the Third Antarctic Empire. Furthermore, due to pre-existing cultural associations between the character of Santa Claus and non-human sentient beings dwelling at Earth's poles, Santa Claus is an ideal candidate for normalizing the existence of human subspecies. Nicholas Roberts is no longer considered an anomaly under Foundation jurisdiction. He is employed under standard Vanguard job contracts for normalized personnel. His normalization consists of employment with Theta-9, with unanimous recommendation from the Site-322 and Site-120 classification committees. Additional information. Summary of VMP-1483. Excerpt from VNP-1483 Specifications VNP-1483 is an alternate version of the continent of Antarctica. It is currently ruled by the Third Antarctic Empire, a matriarchal imperialist monarchy. The technology level of VNP-1483 is roughly equivalent to that of Baseline's late 20th century. However, mass media capabilities are limited, and most virtual recordings of Third Empire culture are in the form of films or photographs. Computing technology and VMP-1483's equivalent of the Internet are primitive.
a dominant species inhabiting VNP-1483 is Homo and Articus, which is divided into subspecies. The majority of Homo and Articus are virtually similar to baseline humanity. However, Homo and Articus also includes the Black Court, a subspecies with thick layers of body fat and fur. Menders, a clerical subspecies with an additional pair of arms and a metal exoskeleton. And what is upon all, a subspecies that stands 2.5 meters tall, has six arms and all black eyes. Normalization Protocols The dominant normalcy preservation organization in VMP-1483 is the Imperial Institute of Paranatural and Esoteric Study, IIPES. The IIPES is not strongly affected by a local impasse, as its philosophy has always included preparing the public for interaction with the anomalous. The policies of IIPES will be revealed to determine if any are appropriate for vanguard adoption. Following the resolution of the impasse, passage to VMP-1483 was restored. VMP-1483 is a member of the inaugural class of Parallel World to be revealed to the public. VMP-1483 was selected due to existing friendly diplomatic relations with the Third Antarctic Empire. The goals of the normalization of VMP-1483 include increasing the public's awareness of the existence and nature of parallel realities and a multiversal nexus, increasing the public's awareness of additional human subspecies, increasing the level of cultural exchange between our reality and VMP-1483, extending the Antarctic Exchange Program to civilian researchers. Normalization Details VMP-6483 Employment Details and History The following documentation was initially created by the SCP Foundation. Designations may not be fully up-to-date. MTF Theta-9 Overview File Designation Mobile Task Force Theta-9 The Polar Express Team Members Lauren Burns Area 179 Leon Holloway Site 19, Timothy Rayner, Site 120, Corey Chapman, Site 322, Nicholas Roberts, VMP 6483, Site 1483. Objectives Escort vital vanguard political figures towards Site 1483 via the usage of VMP 6483's teleportation capabilities to and from the entry to Universe B 10208 Alpha 1483 located in the Queen Alexandra mountain range. Transport of Third Empire personnel as part of the Antarctic Exchange. A vanguard program focused on exchanging knowledge and personnel with the Third Empire. Performance of Nati Vitati's event within the Empire. For further information, refer to VMP 1483 Normalization Statement. A. The Normalization of VMP 1483 on Baseline Earth. History The following is the full timeline of all events leading up to Theta 9's re establishment. 10th of September 2021 The Impasse. A worldwide event causing the end of magic and anomalous activity caused by the actions of the SCP Foundation begins. Relieving VMP 6483 of his anomalous properties, his depression increases. Due to the universal decrease in anomalous activity, the entry to Universe B 10208 Alpha 1483 is lost leading to total accidental dissolution of the highly valuable Foundation Third Empire Alliance. MGF Theta-9 is dissolved. 23rd of November, the impasse is temporarily held off due to the actions of data unavailable, pending release. Shortly after, an O5 vote forms Vanguard, effectively starting the dissolution of the SCP Foundation. 
VMP 6483 regains his abilities, which significantly improves his mental state. Access to the Third Empire is restored. 15th of February 2022 VNP 1483 is inaugurated into the first class of alternate planes for normalization. Dr. Jesse Rivera recommends Nicholas Roberts as a possible member of diplomatic staff. The recommendation is initially denied. 24th of December, a review of the Third Empire's culture under newly instated Vanguard normalization protocols identified a significant factor for positive cultural exchange. For further information, refer to VNP 1483 normalization statement. 25th of December, 2022. MTF Theta 9 is officially reformed. Roberts is promoted to a diplomatic role within Vanguard. VNP 1483 normalization document. Transcript of VNP 1483 VMP 6483 normalization video. The following is a transcript of an educational video produced in conjunction by MTF Theta 9 and the Imperial Institute of Poor natural and esoteric study. The first half of the video will serve as a dramatization of a holiday ritual filmed on location. The second half will provide an educational lecture. I'd like to extend a thanks to Nicholas Roberts and Curtis Son Julien Charlotte Tanemi for their participation and the Third Antarctic Empire for embracing a new era of cooperation. Merry Christmas, friends, from one side of the multiversal compass to the other. Thomas Bailey, VNP, 1483 Commissioner. Proof for release by T. Bailey, 25th of December, 2022. Jamadis Pazanay, Kodisan Jolene Sheldon Tawanamin, member of the Third Antarctic Empire, approximately two meters tall and has four arms. Responsible for local observation of the breaking of the night, an empire-wide celebration celebrating the end of winter and the return of the sun, played by herself. Santa Claus, a being responsible for delivering presents to children on Christmas, played by Nicholas Roberts. Dialogue in the video is in an article, though there are English subtitles. Transcript. Collison. Julian Chaudran Toren Neiman stand at a temple doorway, clasping her four arms together. The temple is adorned with traditional and articulate furnishings, ornate carvings, and tapestries popping with bright reds and rich blues. No flakes lightly fall from the sky. She is the only one on the surface. In this month of the year, most Antarcticans dwell underground. She looks to the sky, the sound of sleigh bells echoes from the sky. A red sleigh pulls up before her, drawn by nine reindeer. The animal at the front has a glowing red nose. Santa Claus sits in the sleigh. Ho, ho, ho! A very merry Christmas to you, come son, you think, shall dare to the main. Greeting Santa Claus, he empress at the North Pole, Commander of Elves and Reindeer, I welcome you in the name of Empress Otmohim the Sixth, first beneath the sun upon the throne of bones. Ho, ho, ho! Much obliged. May I call you Corizan? No. Corizan Julie Sheldon Tonning Mamie. I will give your lineage the honor it deserves. Oh, my name is Sinsink Nick. Ho, 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 ho. Isn't your name Santa Claus? I have many names. Ho, ho, ho. But you may call me whichever one suit your fancy. Now, join me in my sleigh. Khoisan Julink Chaudelin Tanemi joins Santa Claus in his sleigh. She is much taller than him. Where to, holy mender? Khoisan Julink Chaudelin Tanemi points at a tall mountain on the horizon. To the place where dawn meets the land, and the sun returns for the long winter. 
Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, let's be off. Edgar cracks his reins. His sled starts to fly. He looks at the camera. Tonight, Mender closes on to a shoulder on. Delaney, me and I will be sharing some of our holiday traditions with each other. I will be sharing with her the joys of Christmas, and she will break the night. Oh, great and holy servant of the Empress, perhaps you could tell us of the significance of the breaking of the dawn. The breaking of the night is a yearly celebration in which we held the return of the sun from the blighted lands, and each of the seventeen provinces it falls to a mender to perform a blessing upon the highest peak to welcome the sun back from her journeys through darkness. In this province, the duty for this humble servant of the empire. Ho, ho, ho! I can see that you deserve to be on the nice list. I hope that is a good thing. Well, the nice list is where all the good children go, and the naughty list is where the bad children go. On Christmas Eve, I bring the good children present, and the bad children get no reward. So you are a hand of justice, O oh mighty Northern He Empress. I wouldn't say that, you see. When Christmas Eve rolls around, I find there's no such thing as a truly bad child. They arrive at the highest peak in the province. The camera pans over the Antarctic plains. The settlements below are covered in a thick layer of snowfall. Neither Santa nor Chloe Saint Julien Chardonnay Terranami are affected by the cold. There are shadows moving through the ice plains below. Carnivorous penguins migrated to civilization for the winter. I shall now perform the blessings of the awaited dawn. Close on to aim shall dawn terminate me. Close her eyes. She extends her forearms, reaching towards the sky, pulling light from heaven to earth. A sun just forms behind her head growing to a width of twenty meters in diameter. Golden light dances across the snow-covered plains. The carnivorous penguins bark at the light. They started wandering towards the wilderness. Kali Sanju Le Shaldan Terenamin opens her eyes. They glow yellow, though it slowly fades. With this, I welcome the sun's safe return. Santa extends his hand to Colossanjil Ling Shardaran Tommy Naming. They return to the sleigh and take flight. When the dawn infantry comes, hunters shall emerge from the plains and slaughter any beast that yet remain. This is the sun's yearly gift to us. But aren't you hungry now? I suppose so. Ho ho ho! In that case, my friend, let me treat you to the Christmas dinner. Jump cut to the temple. Santa and Kamalisan Junain Shodaran Tonami stand at opposite ends of a table. For guests as esteemed as the He Empress of the North, the Empress would allow the finest delicacies, the most celebrated choirs. Yet you are so gracious as to bring your own. We all have our talents. Ho, ho, ho. Sander snaps his fingers. A red tablecloth appears upon the table. A stuffed roast mega penguin, sweet moss sauce, and other and other delicacies materialize. A Christmas carol played on traditional and other instruments is in the background. The two grab utensils and serve themselves. Yet I feel our cultural exchange has been uneven. I have shown you the blessing of the rated dawn and the breaking of the night. What Santa is the true meaning of Christmas? Santa smiles mysteriously. His eyes twinkle. The music rises. There is a jump cut and a video tour of various holiday celebrations across the Third Antarctic Empire and Christmas celebrations at various Foundation sites, including Area 179, Site 43, Site 87, Site 120 and Site 322 over a mix of Christmas tunes. When the tour completes, the video returns to Cloison 
Julene showed Don to a Amy and Nicholas Roberts sitting side by side facing the camera. Thank you for watching this educational film on the breaking of the dawn and Christmas. We hope you enjoyed our performance. I am Roy San Julene showed Don to Amy and this is my co-star Nicholas Roberts. It is a pleasure working with you, Corazon. The same to you, Nick. Now I portrayed myself, but you, Nick, are clearly blessed with power. But are you Santa Claus? Ha! The truth is, Corazon, I've been playing the role of Santa Claus for many years, and I like to say I'm like Santa Claus each and every day. But I'm not the mythical he empress of the North. Even so, I try every day to embody the spirit of Christmas. For those who are not menders, who do not have blessings like yours, what does it mean to embody Christmas? That's quite the question. On my earth, Christmas is a thousand holidays celebrated as one, each meaning something different to everyone who celebrates it. There are elements of the Roman Saturnalia, the Norse Yule, and of course the Christian faith. It's celebrated across the world, from Chile to Japan. A little differently in every country, but in my heart is one thing that's most important of all. And that might be generosity, giving, thinking of your fellow man or woman, and extending a hand to them. Just like how you break the night in service of the Empress and the Empire. Being Santa is about bringing joy to those around you. Because at the end of the day, Christmas isn't about making yourself happy or the gifts you receive, but how you can touch the lives of others and give them just a taste of magic.